this is all the rage lately. This is all the advertising in your field. Like I said, there's so many different flavors of ice cream, but the flavor of the year, in my opinion, whenever I travel, or I used to travel, I'm not allowed to travel anymore, is uh, SBRT, right? So this one form is Cyber Knife, right? That's the type you talked about. They're advertising one week and you're done. That's yeah. all you get. So now can you explain to the audience how people watching can go one week with radiation therapy five days in a row or I know there's different sequences and be done with their treatment. Well, Will you explain who's a good candidate for that? Okay, so let me clarify one thing. That's weird. You're correcting me. Uh, no, 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 no. You know, so, it's, so um, when you, the more accurately you give radiation, the tighter you can make it. So, so think of this, this is the prostate, right? Think of my head as the prostate, right? Yeah, that's the scary when I, prostate. When I, when I was a young man, I had hair. I was a resident at Stanford. We used to draw the radiation fields with a crayon. We'd have a set of orthogonal images, AP and a lateral. Mm. And we would shoot contrast of the urethra and put contrast in the rectum. We would take a CT slice, one slice, and we would run the dose distribution on that one slice at the middle. And we would use either an eight by eight or a nine by nine field. Okay? Okay. But, um, and we, and back in those days, not just at Stanford, everywhere, we assumed that the prostate did not move. Part of the reason why we assumed that was because we didn't have anything we could do about it anyway, so we might as well just assume it's still there, you know. So in about 1986, there was a guy from Michigan. I mean, the, the Michigan people come in handy every now and then. He was a physicist named Randy Tenhocken. He wrote a paper. He showed that, guess what? The prostate position is moving around. So, and then also Michigan, they had the first FDA approved 3D planning system called Scandi Plan. Mm. And the guy who was chair of the department happened to have trained at UCSF. So as soon as he got this and got it approved, one of the first institutions to get it was UCSF. So I came to UCSF 30 years ago, 1990, and I arrived and they have a 3D planning system, and I had never seen one before. We didn't have them as a resident at Stanford. And um, so at that time, you know, I could talk about how things evolved, but the bottom line is that people didn't understand 3D. They didn't understand dose volume histograms. 3D evolved to, I mean, so conventional radiation, which is what I was taught as a resident at Stanford. Yeah. 3D, we helped pioneer. We were involved in the art, the, the, we had the first, the RTOG did the first studies in the early 90s on a dose escalation using 3D. We then in the early 2000s, uh, the NCI sponsored something called the NCI IMRT working group. IMRT is intensity modulated radiation. You use computers and leaves to modify the leaves so that, and you use optimization algorithms to limit the doses. And then we help pioneer some of the work with image guidance. One, of the, one example of that was the first paper we wrote in 2006 or 2007 in post-op patients, where we took patients who had had radical prostatectomy that were gonna have radiation to cure them. And we implanted gold seeds in the anastomosis where the prostate used to be. Right. And we imaged that every day before treatment, and we could adjust the beam to make sure that we hit the right spot all the time. We also published probably, I think it's the first paper I ever had that was accepted with no modifications. We had, we had three patients that had morbid obesity. And we, uh, we put gold marker seeds in their prostate, and we showed that in people that have more, but the standard of care used to be to line people up on their tattoos. Right. We showed that if you line people up in their tattoos who were morbidly obese, you see, you can move those tattoos wherever you wanted to, right? 
Right. You, you could completely miss the prostate. In other words, you bring the patient on the table, you put the patient on the table, and you line up the beans, and you give the radiation, and the prostate was completely missed. That's not good because you don't cure the cancer and you radiate something else, and that's bad. So that's how image guided radiation got to be evolved is that guiding, you know, that image guidance allowed us to make the fields tighter and tighter and tighter. So okay. when we went from conventional radiation to 3D conformal radiation to intensity modulated radiotherapy to stereotactic body radiotherapy. SBRT. SBRT, the body, the, when we use the CyberKnife, for example, it is tracking motion. So you got seeds in there and the beam is like, well, you know, if you move over here, we're going to go over here. If you go over there, we're going to move over there. Uh, which you need to do if you're going to treat somebody over 45 minutes because air and gas and motion can occur. With a, with a linear accelerator, it doesn't track the same, but the treatment is given over a shorter period of time. So it's sort of six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. You either, if you do it, if it takes longer to deliver, you got to track it. If you do it quickly, you just need to line it up, make sure everything is set and hit it.